So simply unprofessional. I'm your host, Webby. Join me tonight. We got Rob. Hey, everybody. It's Rob. And we got Devin. Hey, guys. It's me, Devin. What's up? All right, fellas. So I kept this one a secret from you. I'm sure Rob has probably seen little things that I've been working on for the past couple of days or overheard conversations yeah. that I've had. Don't the only thing I, I know ones. is what Clay said, that it was a list of people that he gave you. Yeah. So I did. I I I I, uh, I went and I I got Clay to help me out with this a little bit, um, along with several several lists online. So let me ask you both a question. So I want you to answer as fast as possible. Just first thing that comes to your head. Okay. So we're gonna start with we're gonna start with Devin. What's the first thing that pops in your head when I say Marvel Comics superhero? Marvel Comics Super. Yeah. Girl, first of all, my head, I want to say is Spider Man. Spider Man. Cool. A list superhero. Super popular. Rob, what's the first thing that pops in your head, or who's the first person that pops in your head when I say Marvel Comics Super Villain? Magneto. Awesome choice again. Another A list fucking super villain right there. Today, we're going to be talking about some B list superheroes and villains. So what I've done is I've gotten a list, and some of these people may be maybe now considered A-list. I don't think there are any on here that would be considered A-list superheroes or villains. Um, some of them might even be technically lower than B-list based off some of the lists I've, I've read. Um... But I wanted to, you know, make mention of certain heroes and villains um, that are less known or less publicly known or, you know, maybe their powers don't stand up against A-listers. What's that, Devin? No, they're not trying to cut you off, but I want to check. Rob, is Webby being choppy to you or is it just me? Not choppy. Sounds a little bit far from his mic, but... Oh, let, okay. me move, no. let me move my mic. No, no, no it's not mouse. you. It's not my internet. It's being weird. I don't know why my so. Is that a little bit better as far as feel, sounding far away from my mic? Yeah. I mean, you weren't bad. It was just you could tell yeah, there was a gap. Weird. Right. That's the downside of that's why I have not been streaming because it's a downside of being on fucking uh, Wi Fi. Like, I'm not used to having like crappy or spotty internet. Yeah. But yeah, all right. I'm, I'm back in the green now. So all right. right. So, between the lists that uh, I went on and the list that I had Clay compile, Clay had far more super villains on his list. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, so I actually had to wheedle, like, whittle his list down a little bit. But I grabbed uh, 16 superheroes and 16 villains. And I've created a like a, a tournament bracket style thing. And I want to go through with you guys. And they're not pinned up against each other in any particular order. Uh, I will say it is broken down to specifically heroes bracketed against each other and vil- and then villains bracketed against each other. So we can come up with who we feel in this tournament would be the, the ultimate hero or villain um, of this list. Now, again... I didn't put any thought into, like, oh, well, how would this person go up against this person based off their powers? Like, how would they match up? I literally just had the list of people, and I just kept randomly pointing at people on the list and then just writing them down and crossing them off until I found until I filled in the bracket. Um, so th- that's why I said you guys might need a couple uh, 
browser windows open in case some of these people <laughs> you don't know too much about and need to quickly just Google them to see what their powers are or whatnot. Okay. Um, I know everything. Well, that's good. I mean, I, I do have a feeling like you're going to know these first two uh, right off the bat. Um, so the first one we have up is Cloak. Mm-hmm. Being like Cloak from Cloak and Dagger? Yep. Okay. Being okay. pinned up against Moon Knight. Oh, ooh, I like both of those. Um, See, I, I never like saw Cloak and Dagger, so I didn't know much about Cloak until I started reading about them. Um, uh, they have a new Cloak and Dagger. It's not that old. It's like two years old. Yeah. Are you talking about the, the, the TV show? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen any of that. And I don't think I even... I don't. I don't think I even read any of their like I know them by name. I don't think I've read actually any of their comics or anything either either. So we have Cloak and Dagger. Um I I'm not gonna be too picky if like if you you know, if you ask me, oh well which which version? Like if is it Earth six sixteen or fucking I know Marvel Comics did like oh Marvel 2099 or you know yeah, if there are different it. renditions of, of these I, I'm not going to be really picky as long as their powers are generally the same Um, I don't know again like I said I don't know much about uh, Cloak except for the fact that he has powers over something called the Dark Force yeah um, basically he can suck people into his cloak and he uses it to teleport people around but he can also just leave them there in the darkness. Jesus Christ. All right. Um, now, is, any, is there any way for them to get back? Uh, I don't I don't know. I don't know a great deal about... I mean, I saw the, the TV show, and before that, I had seen a little bit about Cloak, but I don't... I don't know if they can get back out. I will, I will check that and see. Now, see, from what I read, because I, I will... Uh... I will let you in on a little secret. Dagger is also on this list of B-rated superheroes. Uh, and from my understanding, I, I had asked Clay yesterday, I was like, should I pin Cloak versus Dagger? Like, Because I know they're normally a team. And uh, f- from what I've read and from what Clay was explaining to me, together they're really powerful because their powers kind of work together. Yeah. Individually, they're obviously not as powerful. Um. But I, I guess the consensus going around on the internet is if Cloak and Dagger ever had to fight each other, they would essentially just both kill each other. Which I don't know. I, I don't know how that works. Again, Cloak and Dagger, I'm not too familiar with these, which is why I wanted to do this on uh, the B-rated heroes. There's the, if you can hear it, there's a bunch of thumping upstairs. That's my upstairs mm-hmm. neighbor's. Loud ass elephants. Uh, so, Devin, do you know anything about Cloak and Dagger, or Cloak specifically? I mean, I'm, I am familiar with Cloak. Like, I know, I'm, I'm aware of his powers and whatnot to a degree, but I mean, I'm not like. No, I will say, based enough. off of like the power grid system, like you know how like oh, the the old school that Marvel, Marvel comics cards very. Is very inaccurate. Yeah, you know? no, I mean, I, I I get that off of like the Marvel the Marvel database ones are, are very skewed, I'll say. Um, but I will say his f- highest yeah. stat seems to be speed, and I'm guessing that's because of the teleportation aspect of it all. Yeah, it says. Unprotected victims trapped in Cloak's dark realm are gradually drained of their life force and presumably die unless Cloak releases them. Oh, goody. <laughs> uh, also, he has an unending hunger for life force that only Dagger can satisfy. Otherwise, he has to eat people. Apparently, that's why they're a team. <laughs> so they're a team protects... purely out of necessity. <laughs> yeah, and her light protects pe- her and other people when they're in Cloak's darkness from being drained of life. Gotcha. All right. Well, I know Devin really. I know you like Moon Knight. Uh, you like Moon Knight. Now, who do, who, who do we think he, would win he, in, he, in a he, fight? 
Uh, like, I mean, okay, so, like, Cloak has, like, actual powers, but I really feel like Moon Knight just has better showings across the board. Um, I, I honestly feel like Moon Knight takes it. Uh, that's just me, like, I don't know, like, it's, it's a weird case, but I really just feel like Moon Knight t- takes it in this case. Okay. Um... Uh, now, Rob, you were just looking up, like, uh, Cloak's power there, his little dark, uh, dark force thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there, like, a range on that? Like, do do they have to be within, you know, in D&D terms, do they have to be adjacent? Do they have to be within five feet? Or can he do it from, like, a dark alley across town? You know what I mean? can create a field of darkness in his general vicinity. Although it can sprout spread well beyond the confines of his cloak. So I don't it says well beyond. I'm not sure how far that is. Well I, mean, I guess that depends on how big his cloak is too. People it's the enveloped of by cloak. cloak's darkness feel numbing, cold, and crippling fear, sometimes seeing disturbing visions. Over long exposure to the darkness drives people insane. Uh also, he can teleport using the cloak and teleport others. He can also become intangible, like division. Okay. Jeez. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this one's tough, uh, I feel, because he... I think it's the teleportation that's kind of throwing me off as far as with cloak and and possibly the intangibility thing. Um, my understanding, Moon Knight is more just kind of like a twisted Batman, right? Yeah, um, Moon Knight is weird. Um, he is like a he is like he is the closest thing you would say to like Marvel's Batman. Um, but. I, I I actually like overall. If I had to like give it, I, I like Moon Knight. Hey, hey. Um, what? I, I was yelling at the dog. What? Oh, okay. I mean, I do like I do like Moon Knight more than Batman. Um, like it, it. It's hard. It's hard. I mean, because his, his suit does give him some. Depending on the suit he's wearing, he did, he did at one point he did have a suit that was like that was near adamant, uh, adamantium, or he does have an adamantium in, 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 like in his suit. I don't know. Like I feel like Cloak has po- has powers, but I feel like Moon Knight, even though he, Cloak has powers, I feel like Moon Knight just does has just better showings, so and I feel like Moon Knight would win. Okay. Uh at that point, I really do. I just feel like Moon Knight Moon Knight could take it. All right. What about you, Rob? Based on what I know of them, I I would feel like it would go the other way to me. That Cloak would probably end up winning. Just because if he can become intangible like, like Vision can, like nothing can hurt. Like regular weapons aren't going to do any damage to him. And that's mostly what Moon, like Moon Knight is. Well, that's also assuming that Kind of, I I would assume that's kind of like Vision too, where yeah, okay, so he can phase, so you know, bullets and weapons and stuff can go and pass through him, but he would also have to know that they're coming, um, mm. you know, to some sort of degree, um, and I I mean I don't know, like I, I I'm kind of leaning cloak right now only because of his his actual powers. Um, yeah, we'll see that it's the opposite with Cloak, though. Cloak is, it says, Cloak, as Cloak, Tyrone is usually intangible, although he can solidify himself through an act of will by absorbing enough light to satisfy the form temporarily. So I guess he's always intangible unless he wills it, so. Like, Vision's the other way around. I think he's usually solid unless he actively becomes intangible. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a weird thing. Um... It's a weird thing because I, I honestly feel like it could go either way. But Moon Knight's suit has a flashlight. It says it so. does. I don't know. I just feel like showing wise, like I feel like showings wise, 
Moon Knight has better. I mean, at the same time, uh, okay, so good. I know this is like a tournament style type thing, and we're, we're pitting these heroes up against each other. I will say, at the same time, we can't just assume that Cloak is going to be in. He has to become tangible to fight at some point, and we can't just assume he's going to stay intangible and just suck everybody into his cloak, because then it's just very one-sided. And I feel, especially in the comics, you know, obviously, yes, first off, these people wouldn't be fighting in the comics or whatever, but if they were, I don't feel like that's just how the writers would do it either. So you have to take into account... I guess some sort of uh, c- combat expertise. Like if Cloak has any other thing up his sleeve other than just opening up his cloak and sucking people into the darkness like a like a Hoover vacuum. Um I now who does in Cloak and Dagger who does most of the fighting? Between them two, honestly, uh, yeah, Dagger has think. better. Yeah. Yeah, Dagger has better fighting. So, what is uh, Cloak's general fighting. role? Like, I, again, I've never he seen. He just show. kind of phases phases around people's shit and like absorbs them in his cloak. That's kind of like his go-to move. Um, and then he does have like dark force channeling where he can like do like powers and shit and like throw like I think like dark beam like dark force beams and shit. But I, he's never really done anything like I don't really. I'm not like a hundred percent like impressed with his feats. I gotta like rebrush up on his feats, but like none of his feats really like they're not like super impressive. Okay. Man, uh like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like think like how many like all his best feats are like with cloak. Like that's the thing. Like by himself. Yeah, way with dagger, sorry. Um I'm going to uh let me see real quick. Uh I'm okay, I'm going to just based off of the dark force channeling thing that cloak has from what I can read, like not the, Oh, I'm going to suck you into the cloak and then you're gone forever. Um, he, he's able to cause people to feel a numbing, cold, intense pain and horrifying visions of their greatest fears and nightmares. That being worded the way it is, and Moon Knight specifically having pain resistance as one of his abilities, and the the mental illness of essentially what breaks down to multiple personality disorder, I feel. Yeah, yes, DID. Um, I think I'm going to give this to Moon Knight. Uh, because even if he tries, even if Cloak were to try to bring out a you know Moon Knight's greatest fear, nothing says that he. I mean, w- what if it's one of the personalities' fears, but not one of the other ones, and then the other one takes control as a defense mechanism? I don't know. I think I think Moon Knight's complex enough, and with his abilities, I feel like he would be able to find a way to get the upper hand on Cloak. I mean, I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of like a toss up. I mean, I think Cloak's I do, teleportation is what would fuck up Moon Knight the, the most. The, the teleportation is like neat. I mean, I I think Moon Knight's going to have a hard time hitting him, but I do think and Cloak hasn't really shown any like impressive feats in terms of being like able to take like even hits from like mediocre people. Um like his durability is not like super impressive. 
So I I I mean I'd say like this, right? Like if it came down to the point where like if Cloak has the ability and the technical skill to take him if need be. And yeah. Um but I mean, I don't know. It's, it's I think that's weird... what it, I think that's really what it boils down to for me is just experience. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think he has experience. I think I will say this, I do 100% believe that if 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 Moon Knight is aware of Cloak's abilities, I think he wins. 100% like without much of a without much thought. Um I do think if it's just like a random encounter down the street with neither one of them knowing the other one, I do think it it could go to Cloak, but I honestly from a from a fighting perspective, Tandy has always been the better of the two. Well, or dagger I, in this case, I do. I do envision always... this as essentially these characters are being tossed into an arena. Just like and they know that they're going to be fighting each other. Like, randomly tossed into an arena, no, no experience. I do think that uh, Cloak can can take it. I don't know. It's just it's like a weird time. I do think Cloak could take it, but I do also feel like if he gets to that point, then yeah. I mean, I think he he definitely can take it just by getting absorbed. Just by absorbing people and just they just slowly dying, it's it's hard. I don't know. Um, it's a it's a weird it's a weird fight. Uh, just because of his specific way he does fight is he usually just stays intangible and absorbs people into his into his into his realm, and that's kind of all he does, and that's kind of it. But I don't really, I don't know. It's hard to call that one, in my opinion. All right. Well, your final vote. My final vote, I mean, if I had to, like, go just random encounter, I'll give it the Cloak, even though I don't like it, and even though oh, I don't okay. necessarily 100% agree with it, but I'll go with Cloak, well, just because it's, yeah. And Rob, you said yours was Cloak? It was, so I'm going to switch to Moon Knight. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> well, Webby, you already picked Moon Knight, so I, there's Yeah, I'm, I'm sticking with mine based off of this, so Moon Knight will progress... So why why are you just switching to Moon Knight, Rob? Because you're doing the opposite of what I'm saying? Because you want to make Webby's life difficult? No, I feel like you just changed because... <laughs> but that you really think it would be Moon Knight. So I, I, I'm, I'm sticking with yours since you changed to mine. Don't do that! I'm just being high. I, I really do feel like it would be Moon Knight, but I mean, that doesn't really mean... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You feel like it would be Moon Knight, so I, okay. I feel like you just switched to Cloak because I picked Cloak, so I switched to Moon Knight because you changed to Cloak, so it should just be Moon Knight. You both agreed on Moon Knight. It's two to one. I will five. say, I will say, any, uh, essentially, any tiebreakers, I will be in, the one who does it. I, I will take on that responsibility because technically there's only three of us talking, and I'm asking, I'm going to always ask you guys your opinions first. Um, so in the case that you guys do oppose each other and it needs a tiebreaker, I will be that tiebreaker. Um, so for the next matchup, we have Captain Britain versus Union Jack. I did specifically pin those up against each other only for the fact that they're British. (laughs) What? So they're like the same person. Um, I don't they're think not. so. I, I'm pretty sure they're not. Uh, I know, if I'm not mistaken, one of them is um, Psylocke's brother. Yeah, it's Captain Britain, but he doesn't. Yeah. And I don't, and think, you have, I don't uh, think Union Jack has much in the way of powers, does he? Mr. Joseph uh, Chapman. <laughs> It depends on which version you're using. I think. I think. I think one of them did have powers, but no, I don't. I don't think they do. I think they just legitimately have. No, he's just basically like shitty Captain America. Um, he yeah, he's just shitty Captain America. And then no, I mean, okay, hundred percent. I vote. You didn't ask me, but I'm voting. Uh... Well, you see, you say Captain America. <laughs> Captain I, I, I was I was essentially gonna say he's like the British. Punish. No, I mean, but like he, no, he's like shitty. He is like, if I'm not mistaken, he is Britain's version of Captain America. Um, but like not, but like, or like, yeah, you can say like Punisher or like their version of Taskmaster. Like supposed to be supposed to be like, yeah, yeah. Anyway, he's not great. He fought alongside with Captain Britain because I'm not mistaken, they were uh, they were on the team, the Knights of the Pendragons, um, which was a comic book back in the day. 
Knights of the Pendragon. Yeah, that was a team. It consisted of of Albion, Green Knight, Sir uh, Sir Gawain, Grace, Breeze, uh, yeah, Ben Gallagher, who is somebody I just mentioned. Uh, yeah, and Union Jack. All of them there. They're all there. Anyway, uh, my vote is 100% Cap Britain. He actually has powers. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we just had this conversation though about the last two because one of them had no, 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 this is very different. I I think Captain Britain has the experience and powers to go to beat the shit out of Union Jack. I don't see Union Jack taking any of this at any point in time. I really don't. I don't, I don't think there's anything Union Jack can do that Captain Britain is not aware of so abilities union jack is a superb athlete an excellent hand-to-hand -hand combatant expert marksman extensive knowledge of various firearms and explosives knowledge of anti-terrorist tactics then you go captain britain interdimensional en energy conduit uh superhuman strength up to 90 tons stamina uh, physically for 24 hours before fatigue toxins durability while wearing his costume his body is surrounded by an invisible force field which renders him highly resistant to the energy field on the same powerful energy blast great impact forces such as bazooka shells or being repeatedly struck by superhumanly strong opponents temperature extremes and fall from great heights without being injured however repeated impact from such sufficiently powerful forces or weaponry will weaken and eventually penetrate the field the field's death, however, is physically designed to allow oxygen and light to pass through. This force field is now sustained by his own confidence. Uh, agility, uh, he has basically peak human or superhuman level of agility. Reflex is kind of the same thing. Uh, Sense is kind of the same, and he can fly. Wait, so uh, the, the, the durability thing, the force field around him, you said that that's sustained by his own confidence? Yeah, it's, it's kind of so like So you just gladiator. have to break down his confidence no, no, it's, it's becomes exactly vulnerable? Like gladiator. <laughs> it's exactly like Gladiator. Gladiator, which is which was used to be Marvel's version of Superman, his power he's like super powerful, but his powers are he his strength uh his powers and strength wax and wanes with his confidence level. Wow. All right. So the the least So you just gotta get him is. to second guess himself constantly. Yeah, basically. And that <laughs> actually is what happened, like at one point, and he did lose a fight like that. Um but yeah. All right, uh, so let's yeah, start with I mean, Rob on this one. I, Essentially, I, I, you have lowbrow Marvel Superman, <laughs> basically, yeah, versus lowbrow less Marvel Punisher. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I was going to pick Captain Britain anyway because he gets his powers from Merlin, but uh, does he really? Yeah. Shit, I know yeah, nothing whole, about yeah. I know yeah. nothing about some of these heroes. It's it's weird. Like, like I know them all yeah, by mutants name. At one point, were like mutants, and then they got like not mutant powers, and maybe got and then they got yeah, it was weird because like Psylocke's a mutant, but then they so their mutant genes are obviously in the family, so it's like yeah, but he got his powers from it, it's it's all weird. All right, it's all weird. Uh yeah, but that one I don't see. I don't think Union Jack can really do anything to hurt. Captain Britain on that one. Like, I really don't think he can do anything. All right, so I, I wholeheartedly agree, but I think it's a bit hypocritical. That's all I'm saying. No, <laughs> no, no, Rob, you say that, but like, I at the end of the day, I gave Cloak the win. <laughs> all right, so it's pretty unanimous between you two that Captain Britain's gonna win that fight. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Just, like, even though I here, and even though just to just to uh. Satiate Rob for like two seconds here. Um, even though I did say these are mostly bullshit. Give me a second here. Because this is going to take a second to load. Moon Knight. Moon Knight. Mark Spectre, my man. Alright, so even though like I said they're mostly BS, right? You have... So you have going down the list of like their fucking power grid thing. You have intelligence for moon for uh, Moon Knight for uh, fucking the intelligence for uh, yeah Moon Knight and Cloak are both two. Strengths both three. The speed is technically both two, but uh, Cloak gets the seven because he's a teleporter. But that's only because he's a teleporter. Their durability. Um, Cloak has more durability. Based on the fact that he's intangible, uh, three to two, he has higher energy projection, and Moon Knight's fighting skills is a four to his two. 
So that's what I was saying. Like, I honestly do believe if like he could rem- if he could catch him when he's not intangible, I do think wholeheartedly Moon Knight would win. However, I do believe then yeah. But if we're going, I will say this though: if we are going full power, Moon Knight, Moon Knight wins hands down. Because in the past, Moon Knight has had divine empowerment. He could get power absorption, necromancy, lunakinesis, geokinesis. Phase transformation, moon empowerment, self sustenance. He was a Phoenix Force conduit at one point. So I mean, if we're going absolute full power, like strongest they've ever been, Moon Knight. But that's not usual Moon Knight, so I'm not counting that. <laughs> so yeah, I, I mean, that's why I was like, I really do feel like, in feats wise, generally speaking, just feats wise, I do feel like if, if Moon Knight caught Cloak unintangible, I do think Moon Knight has the gear and the skills to win the fight. However. Uh, given how he usually fights, Cloak, that is, I don't see that happening in a random encounter. That's why I ultimately gave it to Cloak. But I do feel like in a comic book written fight, now, Moon Knight would get Remember, this is a tournament, so all these people know that they're going up against these people. Well, no, I know what you're saying, but all I'm right. saying, like, I feel like in a comic book written fight, like, if they were going to write a comic book style, I really do feel like Moon Knight would take the majority. But that's why I was like Moon Knight. But I do feel like with just like in a Coliseum fighting style where like it's just too, you know, KO or death or whatever it's going to be. I do feel like Cloak wins just because of how he usually how he usually approaches fights, which he usually just stays intangible and just absorbs people in his cloak. That's kind of his go to. Occasionally, he'll throw like dark force blast at people, but usually he just kind of stays intangible and throws people into his cloak. That's kind of his go to. Um, so yeah, that's why. But I mean, on the flip side of that, I really do feel like uh, Captain Britain just destroys uh, Union Jack because there's really not a lot. You need. Like Union Jack's gonna show up with like maybe a rocket launcher, some pistols, and a grenade, and uh, Captain Britain is is a walking uh, rocket launcher <laughs> without trying to be, if not more. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, so that's that. I mean, that's so, just how I feel about that. But like, I do, I understand what you're saying, Rob, but like, no, that's why ultimately why I did go with Cloak at the end of the day. On the first one. It doesn't matter if Cloak's knocked out of the tournament. Uh, all right, moving on, we have Wonder Man Wonderbar. versus Wonder Quasar. Man. Oof. Now, this has actually happened, I believe. Um, I do... I like both of these. Um, I I ha- I have a fondness for Quasar. I think we've talked about this, Webby. You fucking hate Quasar. <laughs> I don't know. Why do you hate Quasar? I don't know. Dude? It's his stupid blonde hair. <laughs> he he's literally just he's literally. It's his stupid just, face. It's his just, stupid he's, outfit. He is just Marvel's Green Lantern. I don't know why you hate him so I much. I hate him. Why? Because of his stupid face. But. Uh, same reason I hate Scott Summers. Same, re- same reason that I hate fucking Cyclops' dumb hair. Like, like, what's... what's Like, if you hate him, you need to hate Captain America. Like, they have the same fucking hair in this picture. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, if you go back to, like, old school fucking... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Hold on. If you go back to, like, old school fucking Quasar back in the day... Yeah, I mean, every hero, almost damn near every hero, old school fucking hero back in the day. Like, you give me, like, your favorite fucking hero, I guarantee you I could find him, I could find some fucked up picture of him from, like, back in old school comics. Hold on, right here. Like, visual stuff that, you know, the audience can't that's see. Fine. That's fine. I fucking fine. hate Quasar. Look, that stupid ass fucking yeah. picture. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. I hear you. I understand what you're saying. Anyway, I hear you. Wonder I Man versus I just Quasar. Old school stuff. Uh, you know. I, I think, I think Quasar takes this, but that's just me. I'm refreshing myself real quick on both of them, but I believe Quasar just takes this. Um. They are fairly similar. Um, I'm familiar with both of them. I'm just kind of refreshing myself. 
I know fucking like Wonder Man has like a bunch of different like manipulate like he can manipulate energy. He's yeah, super he's fast, super strong. strong. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. No, I I think Quasar wins this. Like he's, I mean, he is one of even though he's like a tier two in terms of power. Like he is one of the top. He is like capable of like hanging with all the tops in Marvel. Um, I will say, you know, under the list of weaknesses for Wonder Man, this is something to take into account. Uh, probably, well, for listeners, even though you're already leaning towards Quasar, and I'm not sure where Rob's leaning yet. Under weaknesses for Wonder Man, extreme pacifism. Ever since recovering from his latest breakdown, Simon has refused to resort to violence, even when absolutely necessary, making him virtually useless in combat. <laughs> Yeah. Something that I, I mean, did not see before. Yeah, but I mean, this is a tournament. So yeah. you're assuming they're fighting, whether or not they. I don't know. I don't know enough about either of them. I'm reading about Quasar right now. More. Uh, I kind of know Wonder Man a little bit. I've never heard of Quasar. Well, I mean, he gets his power from the quantum bands. The yeah. quantum bands it's, are it's bracelets. Yeah, he he. Yeah, and the thing is, this you have. The question, I guess, the question, one hundred percent boils down to can because the one the quantum bands can absorb energy, and like vast amount of energy. Yeah, can but they so absorb? Does no, I'm saying, but like, can they? Uh, if they can absorb bionic energy, then Wonder Man has literally no chance. I do know for a fact Wonder Man is faster. Now, wait, is Quasar's bands? Does that shoot ionic energy? Yeah, he can. Yeah, the the bands can draw upon quantum energy for neural effects, which creating yeah, various power, kind of Wonder fields, Man. energy absorption and projection, interstellar flight, and in the form of teleportation he calls quantum jumping. More complex, powerful constructs take more time to create, and a complete construct is essentially worthless. Blah, 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 blah. Wonder Man um, literally has an ionic energy form. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, but then it says uh, Quasar also possesses the power to absorb and redirect cosmic energies such as those wielded by Silver Surfer, Jack of Hearts, Adam Warlock, Thanos. Yeah, that's what, so, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, like he's could definitely he absorb a his energy threat. form and use it against. Him. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I he's a top tier threat. Like, even though he's not used very often, like he is a top tier threat. Like he's Quasar is Quasar hangs with like some of the. Like top top like he, Quasar can hang with Silver Surfer, even like you know, and that's the thing. Like I, so can Wonder Man physically, but I do like I don't know. I I really I want to say Quasar here. I want to say Quasar, and I'm kind of consulting some other uh, battle threads where this has happened, and their consensus is Quasar. Um, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Quasar. Like, based on what I know and like what I've seen Quasar do, like Wonder Man's not no slouch. Like, I I really I actually enjoy Wonder Man too, but he, he's no slouch. Um, especially once he got once he got his ionic energy form. Um, he yeah. I do think speed wise, um, speed wise, and just based on previous feats I've seen, I do think Wendell or uh fucking Quasar has it on feats. Has him beat, beat on feet. So I'm going to give it to Quasar. Uh, okay. So you're saying Quasar. What about you, Rob, now that you've read up a little bit? I don't know. What do you say? Uh-uh, I'm the tiebreaker here. I said that. Fine, then I picked Wonder Man. Okay. So you have the tiebreak. Now you're just picking people out of sheer spite. <laughs> This is Rob. You did you ever think that wasn't gonna happen? <laughs> the fact that you thought that wasn't gonna happen at some point during this match, I don't know what to do. What I'm you reading, mean? I would also say Quasar. However, I just wanted to save Wonder Man so that you would have to pick. Yeah, exactly. So I guess Quasar moves up. 
quasar. Okay, so I can delete Wonder Man. See, even you have the power to delete Wonder Man. Goddamn right I do. <laughs> All right, so this next, these, these next two, I purposely put together, mainly because of their names. Speedball versus Cannonball. It's the Battle of the Balls. I believe both of them, their weaknesses is self harm because of their powers. <laughs> Speedball versus Cannonball? Yep. I have no idea who Speedball is. I have to look this up. Um, if I remember correctly, Speedball is the dumb bitch that like murdered a town. Uh, um, he's a dude. Yeah, I, I, well, yeah, I know he's a dude, but he's, I mean, like, he's he's, he's, he's a Baldwin. Oh, he's born well, in saying, Connecticut. No, I'm saying I think he murdered an entire town, um, accidentally using his powers. If I remember correctly, he, he he they mentioned him. I think in Young Mutants. I think at one point, I think he murdered a town. If I remember correctly, or was it New Warriors? Let me see. Because uh, this is the superhuman ability to create a connect force field of unknown energy manifests. Here, doesn't bubbles around himself to absorb all kinetic energy directed against him. And reflects it with even greater force against an object in which he is in contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The new warriors. Oh, so he basically like energy. pings around in a room, like crushing and destroying everything. <laughs> yeah. No, that was Nitro that did that. Yeah, no, it's Penance Nitro that did that. But I'm trying to think what made him become Penance. The events of Stanford, Baldwin believes his powers is to be burned out. I don't know, whatever Stanford is. I'm trying to think that. Am I, am I tripping on that? I feel like Speedball murdered my people. I could be wrong, but unintentionally murdered my people. Uh, deliberate uh, self-harm comes from his penance. Uh, Robbie's penance powers required him to cut or otherwise injure himself to activate, at least initially, uh, as his penance costume had over 600 spikes inside, one for each Stamford victim. During this time, he was stated by Doc Sampson to be addicted to self-harm. He appeared to have still not overcome his guilt following his abandonment of his penance persona though he was genuinely trying he still had to cut him cut to use the penance powers however yeah well the thing is with his penance powers is it's hard to judge that in the fight because i'm not mistaken those powers fun they work fundamentally different than his regular powers do uh well, 60 of the spikes in his penance suit are longer than the rest, one for each of the children he killed. I, 60 children? Oh, he did kill well children! Okay, oh. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. It was an accident. Um, It was an accident in a fight with him, I think, in Nitro. Um, And he was fighting Nitro, and when he did, something happened, and he caused Nitro to, like, uh, like unleash his powers or some shit. Or he didn't, like, properly clear the town or something. And Nitro basically... Did an explosive blast and it killed a bunch of people and like sixty children. I'm not crazy. Like Nitro killed yeah, it, him, but he was like attached to him. The, the he, suit he contained the spikes representing the 612 people who died in the Stanford explosion. The yeah, 60 yeah. larger yeah. spikes represented the 60 children who burned to death in a schoolyard. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. I'm wow, not crazy. This okay. character is dark. <laughs> the shit got dark. I mean, he's dark. He's dark, and then he's also not at the same time. It's kind of weird. Um, I knew I should have put slapstick in here instead of fucking speedball. Hyperkinetic shot where this pen is going to Well, you know, more breath of all can I do. Yeah, that was cool. I mean... Oh, God, did you see his penance suit? He looks like a fucking nightmare. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually like his penance suit. Um, that was like the 
edgy times be edgy times. So what are you guys thinking as far as him versus Cannonball, whose power is to essentially turn his lower torso into a jet engine and th- thrust himself places? Man, this is hard. Uh, it's difficult because technically with with Speedball's powers, they would both like bounce off each other and be sent in different directions, like get super velocity, so I don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't really think they could hurt each other. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, I really don't. I honestly can't call this one. I don't really know, and I don't have a particular like. I I've never had a particular like fascination for either character. I never like dove into them <laughs> to like find out which one okay. would be the one that would win. So I really have no idea. Also, I need to use bathroom there, but now I will say uh, if I mentioning what you just mentioned, Rob. If you feel like there would be no particular victor mm-hmm. in this fight. We can essentially just before I go to the bathroom. I, my voters, uh, my vote is Thanos snaps his fingers and they both die. They're well, both I, in the I, I would say 50%. that they would both eliminate each other based off of. I was gonna say Thanos yeah, but then he, someone's the unopposed for the next round, though. <laughs> yeah, but that happens in tournaments sometimes. I mean, the way their powers work. I don't really see either of them being the victor. Like they would just constantly bounce off each other. <laughs> okay. So we will just eliminate. Uh, uh, since Devin stepped away to use the restroom, you and I uh, are you in agreement in my determination of just eliminating both of them? I guess. And that gives the previous victor a free pass to move on. Oh, would one of them have been fighting Quasar? Yeah. Oh. Whoever won like this would have ended up time. fighting Quasar, but then they would have they would have ended up losing the Quasar. So it doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> yeah. So Quasar automatically proceeds. I'm back. Sorry. All right. So we determined while you were gone that Speedball and Cannonball would not be able to complete the fight. So neither one of them will progress. Uh, which gives Quasar the free progression to the next round. Because the victor of the Speedball versus Cannonball would have had to fight Quasar. Didn't 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 Quasar already... Oh, okay. I'm like, didn't Quasar already go through? Yeah. But now he gets to go through again for free because there was no victor to the Speedball-Cannonball fight. Okay. So now, moving from the bottom, we have Shadow Cat. Versus, okay. versus dagger. Shadow cat versus dagger. We all know who Shadow Cat is, correct? I do. I do. Oh, they uh so currently I, I found it. So Speedball uh the Stanford incident was the beginning of the Civil War storyline where they were trying like they were doing a television show for the, uh, the New Warriors were, like, doing their, the TV show Watch Us Apprehend, like, supervillains. So the supervillains destroyed the town, including all of the New Warriors, except for Baldwin, because his powers kept him from dying, because he just bounces off of everything. So that's why, that's what it was. And so that was the triggering of the Registration Act in the Civil War storyline. Well, Where in the movie, it was Scarlet Witch, but... <laughs> So just know when you go to watch the MCU that when Scarlet Witch does that thing that starts to trigger the the Civil War arc, that somewhere it was because Speedball murdered a town of people. Well, I mean, he didn't. He just happened to survive it, but yeah, <clears throat> feels guilty about it, I guess. Uh, okay, so Shadow Cat versus Dagger. Hmm. I don't. I mean, again, I don't know much about Dagger. I think Shadow everybody Cat knows is more of like a, not really a B list. I she, she is on a lot of B list lists. Mm-hmm. Again, I don't. I don't agree with some of the B list listers that they had out there. 
but so I wanted to take some even more less known people, but yeah, let's just say there was one on here that was technically a B. Uh, he was quoted as being a B-list superhero, and I took him off here because I felt like he was far too powerful for the list. Um, but yeah. But I mean, if you feel like if you feel like Shadow Cat's not a B-lister, does that mean you think she would stomp a hole in Dagger? Well, I don't know because Dagger's used to fighting alongside an intangible person. <laughs> so, I mean, that, is that has more powers than Shadow Cat, so I don't know. Uh, I mean, does Shadow Cat get to have her dragon? Because then, hands down, Shadow Cat wins. I will Where say when 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 Clay first gave me this list, Lockheed was his own. He he had Lockheed separate from Shadowcat, <laughs> and I had to take him off his list because I don't feel like Lockheed alone would be able to stand it against some of the people on this list. <laughs> and I was debating whether or not to give Lockheed to Shadowcat as a team, but then I put Cloak and Dagger on here, and I was like, ah, it's not. It's not a team fights though. It's individual fights. So, no, she does not have Lockheed. I will. I am looking into something, and I will have a. I, I will have an answer for you very shortly, here, sir. Okay. Um, I'm reading something, so just give me a second here. Uh. So she would not have the transfer. She would not have the ability to teleport because that is only when she has cloak with her. She has something called light force generation. Um, as a result to her exposure to experimental drugs, dagger generates a form of living light, which is actually light force. She produces much more than normal humans do, but it is usually converted into the use of her powers. Overuse of her powers could be fatal. Dagger generates and stores this life force energy automatically. If she goes for more than a week or so without using her powers, she will become fevered and delirious and eventually discharge her energy involuntarily. When inverted by Mr. Negative, Dagger draws her powers from the Dark Force, but they are otherwise identical, save for her daggers causing additional pain. Uh, it does state here that her weak, one of her weaknesses is non-living objects are unaffected by her daggers. That doesn't necessarily help in this case. Mm -hmm. Uh, she can remove toxins, drugs, and other malignant substances from other people's systems. So she can help heal people. I do. Th oh, she can direct a ricochet after having her, one of her daggers ricochet off something. She can sometimes redirect it. Uh, the daggers are dispersed if they hit non-living things. Now, does she manifest her daggers? Are they just like energy daggers that she manifests, or are they actually physical daggers that she <clears throat> pushes this they, light into? They appear like they're conjured daggers, basically. Okay. So <laughs> then if she hits something that's non-living, they just disperse and she has to reconjure it? I guess. Hmm. Um, I I do think this. I do think hand in hand. This boy, this I think in my opinion, this boils down to if uh daggers daggers can hit Kitty while she's intangible. If they can't, I don't think she has a chance here. Uh, because Kitty is a much better fighter. Is she? Yeah, she's she's a trained ninja. I mean, uh, oh. I mean, that's something I didn't know. Yeah, she's a trained ninja. She's also she also has a Israeli special forces training. She let's see, Madison Shadow Shadowcat possesses moderate expertise in the martial arts of Japanese uh, ninja and samurai. Shadowcat demonstrated great knowledge in the methods of combat when she was mentally possessed by the Ronin Ogun. 
Uh, with this possession, Eric Shadow Cat forgot the knowledge of ninja techniques he gave her, but she retrained the knowledge of Japanese martial arts as well as street fighting methods taught to her by Wolverine. She also knows Israeli special forces training. Um, she's a master of swordsman, uh, trained by the Silver Samurai. She has dance training. She's also an expert pilot, which I mean, I guess doesn't really, yeah. And I'm trying to see are her, yeah, no, her powers aren't mystical because she does her phasing is get hurt by mystical, but uh, light force is not the light force generation isn't mystical in nature. Okay. But I'm trying to see, can they hit intangibles? Um, I don't. Think I will say, can. based off of this quick Google search, I don't believe so. If they can't hit intangibles, I don't really see how she how she can win this. Um, for the same reasons, like with cloak, I don't really see how how uh the average person's going to be cloaked just for that same reason. Okay. She doesn't really have a way that can like actually touch her, and I and she had, at the very least has to hand to hand combat to go. Hand well, I mean, Shadow Cat her. also doesn't even have to touch her. She can just phase into her body, become partly re-tangible, and cause her to go unconscious. Right, so, that too. <laughs> I mean, but, right, that, that <laughs> also is well. But I mean, even yeah, yeah, but I'm assuming even, that that's not a, wanted to, like, a go-to ass, every fight. Yeah. Right, even if she wanted to just go ahead and like, actually like whip her ass like she could. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think it falls in like that that middle ground there so it's kind of all right well let's start yeah. let's start with rob she can cause machines to malfunction or be destroyed as she phases through them and also induces shock and unconsciousness in living beings so so let's start with rob what's your vote shadow cat especially if she had her freaking dragon she doesn't <laughs> so i'm sorry next <laughs> next time she'll have the damn dragon uh devin your vote by sounds of it, it's probably Shadow Cat. Shadow Cat for me, yeah. yeah. Shadow Cat. It's on. All right, these next two. Uh, I don't know much about one of them. I'll even, I'm, I'm even going to have to Google them. Uh, it's Puck versus Nomad. Puck versus Nomad. Yeah, Puck from the infamous Puck Alpha Canadian, Flight. He loses. Oh, well, I know what you're talking about. Well, I got Rob's. I got Rob's vote. He says Puck's a Canadian. He loses. I mean, he's probably not wrong. Oh uh, man, uh, fucking! I know Puck almost nothing out. about Nomad. Uh, uh, I mean, like he doesn't like really. He was like fake Bucky. Um, that was. It, I mean, he doesn't really have a lot of stuff going for him. I mean, on paper, even though, yes, Puck's Canadian, I do think Puck actually wins this. Okay. <laughs> Just thought the mean, fact that he, he has powers. Um, does Nomad have I powers will... at all? He doesn't, and they both have the same levels of fighting skill, uh, so I will say that. I mean, he did have enhanced strength at one point, uh, but that's about it. All right, so your vote is for Puck, purely to the fact that Nomad has nothing on his I mean. Deck. Puck has nobody has nothing on his like thing that's worth mentioning, and I do think Puck has the potential to be a little better here. Puck does it. have compressed rubbery physiology, <laughs> superhuman strength, superhuman speed, superhuman durability and invulnerability, agility, reflexes, stamina, extended longevity, a death-like state. He can put himself into a temporary death-like coma. Uh, he is a skilled martial artist, and he is highly intelligent. So, all right. Well, uh, so your vote is for Puck. Rob, what is your vote for? Okay, if if he if you are actually sticking to that, then that means the tiebreaker breaks down to me, and I'm going to have to give it to Puck over Nomad. Uh, I have no list of anything for Nomad. He is so low on the B lister scale yeah. that he's 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 not a great. He's a low skill Bucky Barnes without the cool yeah. metal arm. Yeah, I mean that's kind of 
yeah, I don't really have anything for Puck. I mean, for uh, for Nomad, I think yeah, Puck. I think wins this one, unfortunately. All right. Even though Puck is Canadian, that's a big like a big neg. But all right, so Puck moves on. Oh, fuck uh, you. Fuck you, boy. Next, uh, we have Magan. M e g g a n. I don't know if you know who she is. Megan. I don't know Wait. if it's just pronounced Megan. Is it Magan? See, even Devin said Megan. Magan. Magan. No, I mean Magan, Megan. How do you want to say it? Like, I mean, I'm just saying, like, okay. Sure. Anyway, Megan you, versus when, Longshot. When you said, when you said, when you said Magan, I thought of uh, sure uh, Miss Martian, and I was like, um, that's gonna be a hard person to lose lose to. Miss Martian is going to be... Uh, yeah, Miss Martian would have that. Yeah, you said McGon and who else? Longshot. Longshot? Megan, Megan McGon, whoever. <laughs> I'm familiar with Longshot. I just want to look her up real quick. Longshot... Has uh, well, you too. Oh, well, really is really lucky or something, I believe, which is sometimes OP. I will say, Megan well, long shot comes from the mo- long shot or Megan comes or long shot comes from the mojo verse. That whole verse is fucked up. So let's see. Uh, he's genetically augmented by magical means, superhuman speed, agility, but nothing like crazy. He does have a healing factor, which is nice. Superhuman attractiveness. Very. There you go. He has superhuman attractiveness. He d- does have probability field manipulation. Like Scarlet Witch. I will he's say the hu- superhuman human attractiveness human. is labeled, and he has, which tends to compel women and some men to fall in love with him upon first sight. Megan is a woman. Just throwing that out there. She's a fairy, though. She, because the fair are usually resistant. <laughs> this is. Not I mean, she D&D. also she also, she also has elemental manipulation and that. I do think I think she just has more going for her. Um, I do think she has more going for her than than, than Longshot. Longshot's kind of interesting in the sense that yeah, he has to throwing knives. He has his probability manipulation, and theoretically, in a perfect world, I do think he can take this just because he has the ability to throw his knives and manipulate the probability to be successful for him. Um, and her durability... I mean, but she's also survived things like a regular like, knife strike. She's not going to fucking kill her. She, now, keep in mind, because of his probability field manipulation, he has something called reality warp resistance uh, where yeah. he is shielded from the reality warping powers of others. Yeah, well, I mean, she, she's not she's not really... She also has reality warp resistance because of her, of her shape-changing powers. And she's not really warping reality. She's just an elemental. So. She's an element. Yeah, I I think she takes I think she has more going for her. I just think she has more natural going, more at her, at her disposal that he won't be able to handle. Because she has, if she goes to like her elemental form, she has fucking energy, uh, magical energy manipulation. She can like change the environment and shit. I don't know. It also says Longshot uh, has reality healing abilities. So, yeah, I mean, he, he does uh, have regenerating healing factor, um, but it, it's real. not it's not as good as Wolverine's. If I, if I remember correctly, Longshot's healing factor. Um. I mean, his, it says that his good luck ability is activated by pulling probability of luck away from other people. So he could just make her extremely right. unlucky and himself lucky. I don't know. Right, uh, right. But uh, I don't know. I feel like she just has more going for now, her. Now, hold on. Now, uh, now, you have to factor in weaknesses, too. 
and one of her weaknesses it says Megan's mind does not have the same level of psychic blocks that most humans and especially beings with psionic powers do. But this can make her impulsive and impressionable, often acting on the present with little concern for the past or the future. I mean, that's fine. Would her would her additional would her vulnerability to being impressionable act with long shots super attractiveness at all, do you think? No. All right. I, I'm just throwing it out there. I want to make sure all boxes are checked. Yeah. Oh. So you're Maybe going with uh, you're going with Megan. The guy flies around with camera drones, and he's a, and he's a supreme douche. Look at that douche face right there. I mean, I agree. I don't, I don't like long shot either, <laughs> but I know. I mean, I don't. He looks like he belongs shot. in like. What's that fucking? What's the? What's, I don't know, the, man. what's the the Dazzler? Is that the X Men who who's a rock yeah. star? They're just they're, looks, they're looks just like she unknown. he needs to be in a band with her. <laughs> yeah, they usually are together. Oh, Longshot are they? And Dazzler. Yeah. yeah, Dazzler and Longshot they are in a band together, I think, or they're in a group together. Maybe. All right, yeah. so Rob, what do you vote for this this matchup? Uh, I was leaning towards Megan, but I mean, Longshot has superhuman. He has seduced me, and <laughs> I don't. I don't. Me vote for him. Either way, honestly, I think. All I right, so I'm gonna vote for Megan with anything, Devin. <laughs> anything, anything in relation with like luck based powers, I I hate calling those fights because there's so many what ifs or like people with precognition, like Midnighter. He's a fucking nightmare to like call fights for. Because, like his, he he stated numerous times in comics, and he has good feet to back it up. But he stated numerous times his book, his brain works like a book, except he starts from the ending of the book, and basically his brain shows him exactly how he won't get. So he picks the outcome, which is the ending of the book, and his brain works backwards and shows him how to get there. So it's it, it and it, it it's like you, how do you really call that in like just a random fight? He's, it's a fucking nightmare to, like, call. When, like, on paper, his stats are, like, maybe comparable to fucking... Uh, maybe comparable to, like, Spider-Man. But, like, you give him... But, like, he's taken out people like Apollo, who can, like, go toe-to-toe with Superman, and shit like that. And you're like, well, how does this work exactly? It, 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 it's just... It's weird. So, like, anybody with, like, luck-based powers or precognition, it's always, like, I hate trying to call those fights just because... Based on what I'm reading and based on what she has going for her, I would say she would win. But with luck based powers, it's like, I don't know. It's that depending on how far his powers go, all that could not matter at all. You know what I mean? Okay. It can be totally invalidated and not worth talking about. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. So I'm I don't really care where Dwight lands. Uh so well, I'm you had already be... thrown your hat in the role in in the yeah. ring for me. Well, no, so well, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, saying, yeah, no, I'm saying, I'm openly saying that I don't care where this ends. Like, I okay. don't care. Next one, and this is the last for the first rounds, is Night Thrasher versus Squirrel Girl. Oh God, I picked Squirrel Girl for the memes. I picked Squirrel Girl because Webby would want me to pick Squirrel Girl. And I also I picked Squirrel Girl because <laughs> I would because of just for me. Also, Night Thrasher is not like... Night Thrasher is shitty uh, fucking Nightwing. That's all he is. Yeah. He's shitty Nightwing with a Darth Maul aesthetic. Alright, so that is all uh, of the first rounds. Words. What's that? A man uses a skateboard. Yeah. Uh, okay. I do not like how this met up, but sure. All right, so yeah. real quick, since we've already gone over kind of their abilities and what they can do for the ones that we weren't sure of, the second round should go much faster. And we're probably going to do the villains on a separate SU because uh, we're already over an hour talking about these heroes. And hey, look. And then we'll have a massive matchup at the end. Like, I, I and most things, Longshot has a mullet, which I am like, ugh, gross. But this last picture, I can see it. Uh, yeah, he probably still has a mullet in that picture. He doesn't. You don't know that. You would see it on the sides. No, not necessarily. Just has to be longer in the back. 
Nah. It probably is. Just picture that picture with him with a mullet. And still no. All right, then. I don't know how they say that he's super attractive. Chicks dig the mullet. All right, so going through the second rounds real quick, we have Captain Britain versus Moon Knight. What do you guys think? Captain Britain. Rob? I would also say Captain Britain, but... I don't want to. There is no, there is no butts. If you say you would also do it, then that's also what it is. Captain Britain moves forward. Quasar automatically got to move forward. Then we have Shadow Cat versus Puck. Shadow Cat. Shadow Cat, probably. All right. Sorry for the Canadian listeners out there. No, and sorry to John because it. his favorite people are the Alpha Flight. So <laughs> that it's John. So that that explains a lot. He is also Canadian, so he loses. <laughs> All right. So now we have Megan versus Squirrel Girl. We have hmm. who? Me- Megan. My God, I don't. Whatever the fuck <laughs> she is. Yeah. Versus Squirrel Girl. One panel feeds McGon by far. I don't. I refuse to go any other way with that. All right, Rob. I don't, know. I don't really know Squirrel Girl's powers that well. Uh, Let me see. tell you, Squirrel powers. Uh, squirrel Girl is a mutate with several traits that are similar or to or usually associated with squirrels. Uh, she possesses superhuman strength. Uh, she can lift between eight hundred and eight hundred pounds and twenty five tons. She has superhuman jaw strength. Uh, she's capable of biting with one million and eighty-five thousand pounds of pressure. This allows for her to, uh, for instance, to chew through a steel door in a matter of seconds. She has superhuman leaping. Um, her strength extends down to her legs, allowing her to leap several stories high. Uh, she has small claws on each of her fingers and toes to enhance her gripping and climbing abilities. She has a prehensile tail. She has night vision, enhanced peripheral vision. So her peripheral vision is as sharp and clear as her direct vi- vision. She has knuckle spikes that are retractable uh, and capable of carving through solid wood. Uh, she can communicate and speak with squirrels. She has a regenerative healing factor. Uh, she's also a science expert, and she has medium awareness. She has routinely broken the fourth wall and directly addressed audiences. Those are her powers. Um, you missed that. Her lips taste like hazelnuts, and she has nut sacks. <laughs> Reading here. <laughs> okay. Krogo carries a utility belt. Comprising multiple pouches that contain nuts to give snacks to her squirrels. These are known humorously as her nut sacks. Oh, <laughs> and well, if we're going under equipment, she does have something else. She has Deadpool's Guide to Supervillain Cards, which is a series of 4,522 educational trading cards written by Deadpool that she relies on as a primary source of information for whatever villain she happens to be facing. And she has Deadpool's Guide to Supervillain Super Accessories, which is an appendix of Deadpool's Guide to Supervillains, uh, which is features different villains' methods of transportation. Well, she also has Iron Man's Versus series battle cards of heroes, too. So she's got heroes from Iron Man and villains from Deadpool. From Deadpool. So, yeah. So what is your vote, Rob? Um, I'd have to go with Nagan as well. Well, I have been outvoted, and my girl has been knocked out of the tournament. That's fine. Love you, Wally, but that's fine. Hey, man, I just ask you one question. Has Magan ever beaten Thanos? Nope. Has Squirrel ever beaten Thanos on panel? Yep. Nope. Yep. Not on panel. I'll, I'll find it. No, it, she it just cut away and it cut back and it said like, "Oh, she beat him." Yep. See, it's great. Uh, all right. <laughs> we only have 
three more fights left. Let's go with uh, M Megan versus Shadowcat. It's funny, they were both in Excalibur together. Megan and Shadowcat? Yeah. Huh? So they would know each other's fighting styles. Uh, let's start with Rob this time. I uh, I don't know. I mean, it depends on if any of Megan's powers can reach her in her shadow cat form. I mean, I would assume any type of blaster would not, or blaster or projectile of some fashion wouldn't be able to. I'm assuming, I'm assuming Kitty could probably just phase through it. I mean, she can phase through electrical devices without being electrocuted. So, we know that energy can't hurt her in her phase form. Yeah. And who's the fight against again? Uh, Shadowcat versus Megan right now. No, on that one. Still probably. I'd say, I don't know. I'm going to say Megan on that one, just because she is what she is. Thinking, Rob. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm. I would probably say her because I'm. I'm just reading here. It says that she can make the atoms and things pull apart, which basically, like, because that's how Shadowcat can, like, cause can fly and stuff by walking on the atoms of the air. So she can keep Shadowcat from getting to her. And so she also controls mystical energies, which magic can affect Shadowcat. So, yeah. That's kind of where I'm coming from, too, on this one, but... All right. Uh, next fight is Captain Britain versus Quasar. Quasar. Mainly because Captain Britain's whole thing is energy absorption and super strength, but, I mean, Quasar can absorb energy and has tangled with stronger foes. And come out on top. So my vote on that one is Quasar. All right. Rob? Hmm. Uh, I would, I'm going to go with Captain Britain just because his, like I said, his powers come from Merlin, so they're technically magical. Magical tends to, to beat just energy most of the times. Oh, that means I'm the tiebreaker here. Quantum energy forms do not protect against psionic, magical, and or extra dimensional energies. Uh, Man, that's a tough one for me. Uh, I think I'm going to have to, as much as I don't want to, I'm going to have to give this one to Quasar just because... Quasar is faster. 
and uh, they both would be able to hurt each other because Captain Britain would be able to hurt Quasar because of his his, his essentially his shit's magical. But I feel like Quasar could hurt Captain Britain faster. Let me just double check one thing on Captain Britain for sure, but like I'm I'm still very leaning very much leaning towards Quasar. Um uh, his powers are not actually magical, if I'm not mistaken, anymore. Originally, his powers were linked to the amulet, which is by Merlin, but it says now he has, uh, his abilities are powered by interdimensional energies, which are connected around the British Isles of each reality and also in Outer World. So that would, just, like so that would from... still be extra-dimensional energies. Right, but is it extra-dimensional or interdimensional magical? Well, that's the thing is is Quasar's quantum energy forms do not protect against psionic, magical, or extra dimensional energies. Right. So I feel like Brit- Captain Britain would still be able to pummel Quasar, but I, I think Quasar is just faster than Captain Britain. I think he's faster. I think he's tangled with more and with more quantifiable threats. Because Captain Britain, he can't, like, shoot... He doesn't shoot his energies, right? He can shoot energy. He, he can shoot energy blast. I'm pretty sure he has energy blast. He can shoot out. Uh, um, that might have just swayed me over to Captain Britain, then. I still don't think... I just don't think he has anything strong enough to actually do do the necessary damage to him. I actually, he might not be able to shoot him. I'm trying to read it. I don't see... He doesn't have... No, he doesn't have... Uh... Not from what I'm reading, he doesn't have... Because I know he can manifest like a, a mace or something, right? Or, or some sort of... Uh... Yeah, from what, from what I'm seeing, uh, he, he he does not have um, the ability to... Alright. Well, I feel like we all know where this is going to lead. So I'm just going to help us get there faster. I am going to say, based off of the speed and assuming that from what I can read, Captain Britain does not have any type of energy blast that he can shoot out. Because I think he can manifest things. I, I, I want to say I've honestly, seen him with, like a base. You pick that one. I don't really care. You but, can pick who you want to pick. I well, honestly do. You're based off like feats and what's listed. I really do think. He, yeah, um, I'm, I'm pushing Quasar through as much as I don't like him. And then that brings us to our final fight for the the championship for the heroes is Megan versus Quasar. What happened to Cloak? Cloak got eliminated by Moon Knight. The very first. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I forgot. Rob was being difficult. You're um... being difficult. So sure. well let's 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 get that right out there gate now. Rob and only Rob, what is your choice on this last fight so you can't be difficult? I can be difficult. Rob? I, think I will start throwing shit at you. Alright, you chose Megan. Alright. So now Devin, you can be difficult if you choose to be, but we wanted to at least eliminate that option for Rob. <laughs> I can change my mind. Nope, you've already locked I'm, it in. I'm reading something here. Hold on. Um, I think it's funny that you put almost the entire founding team of Excalibur on in this tournament. Were they? That just yeah, shows Megan, that Excalibur is a B-list fucking team. Megan, Captain Britain, Shadow Cat, and Nightcrawler were the original oh. members of the founding members. All right. Oh, and Phoenix. Rachel Summers Phoenix. So I'm just I'm reading through Comic Vines uh version of because again I always I the Marvel Wiki is a strange um place in that it's usually not your best edited version of the their characters' powers. Like it's usually just kind of thrown all over the place. So I'm gonna see. Uh, 
and then I will have one last question once we figure out who who. We okay, so like this them. is what usually this is like what is like what I'm getting at here. Like this is why I always try to contact them because they usually have more in depth in depth explanations based on like the feats that what happened. So for instance, uh, going back to Quasar, so he while well, he does technically have the limitations on magic it says the bands cannot absorb or resist it however an enchanted physical object will only be as strong as the object itself would be otherwise therefore thor's hammer molnir will simply not shatter quasar's force fuel like glass fortunately magicians have no control over the energies he manipulates so it evens out extra dimensional energies quasar settled to all pers- persons using dark force the q bands cannot create constructs to wholly resist dark force energy the dark force penetrates energy like it wasn't even there also energies from the negative zone such as nihilus can corrupt the bands of wearing them Kinetic energies, physically, that's why Maelstrom or Oracle's energy to begin with, but the bearer can resist the kinetically imbued objects, such as a knife or a deck of cards, the bearer of the quantum bands sense that, that the attack may throw up the shield defend themselves with it. Sonic energy, sonic blasts will cut through any quantum construct like paper mache. Fortunately, most sonic manipulators have the energy of quantum bands, so it evens out, and matter manipulation. Um, but, let's go. Wait, he's here. vulnerable to sonic damage? Or is that psionic, not sonic? Oh, psionic. No, not sonic. Sonic, he, he, he can absorb, technically. I was like, oh man, we should have thrown Banshee in the mix. <laughs> I mean, the band of tools for manipulating forms of energy. Or, uh, what's your face? Can absorb. I can't remember her name. His daughter there. Yeah. Siren. So, it, Siren. so it, basically, anything, if they throw anything on the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, he it does nothing to him. Um, Teleportation, things like that. But he's also been shown to, like, fuck with cosmic energies, such as, uh, uh, Silver Surfer. Surfer. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm looking at that, and Cat Britain, kind of the same deal. Uh, and, and no, I'm double-checked on this, he doesn't have anything where he can, like, throw abilities, because he used to have, he used to have items that did that, but his most recent set of powers, he doesn't have any items that, like, project powers, he's just magically strong. Right. And he can fly. Um, and then now we're talking about what's her name? Megan uh, versus Quasar. Megan. It's M E G G A N, right? Yeah. M E G G A N. Yep. Yep. Megan, let me go hop on her and see what what she's got working with here. Uh, extremely powerful mutant. She's an empath, elemental, and shapeshifter. The comedy's powers give Megan a mirror to mystical ability. She has proven capable of master control over the four basic elements: air, fire, earth, and water. Uh, Megan is a degree of influence and control and bonding of the elements on her from considerable array of effects that Rebel most accomplished on the major. Megan's empathy ability allows her to feel the emotions of others. She has been shown to use emotion people, animals, and plants. She can also use other emotions. She can see psychic, natural, and magical aura. If possessed, the ability to track someone down with extra entry abilities. Being an em- empathetic elemental, Megan control a variety of natural phenomena with level of power with a high degree of precise control. The environment will act. Uh, Active respond to Megan's opinions, well, her emotional state. If she's angry, volcanoes will form slash erupt. Or a storm will come. She can stop a forest fire without even trying. She can split lakes in half with a wave of her hand. Megan can also affect magnetic fields around herself. She can enhance the abilities of Earthborn mutants with her elemental powers. She can also affect man-made things. For instance, when she needed to get to a lower level in a building, she talked to the atoms of the structure to make it to make a hole um, and seal it back up as if nothing ever happened. Um, once she made her descent, she can use her focus, or she can use she can. Use her focus, her element. She can use her focus. That is just really weird. Use her focus, her elemental powers, and energy blasts. And Megan was attacked by by Bubba Yaga. She manipulated the circles on magical energies and used it against her. Megan is also a shapeshifter. She become anything living. She can grow in size or mass. She's been shown to even become creatures in love. In legend, when Megan was an infant, she willed her body to become covered in fur. Oh, and Megan has response to her exposure to coal. And Megan shapeshifts. She gets special powers. Her, 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 her. She went to some dragon like being. She gained the power of fire, fire breathing when she became a werewolf and had to wear a fight and some agility. She also grew a humanoid bunny where she needed to track someone down. She gained the bunny's agility and jumping skill. Megan can also shape shift into humans depending on her mood. She shape shifts into whatever her mood reflects. If she feels love by everyone, she shapes into a beautiful woman. If she feels hated, she reflect reflect that hatred. She has also been shown to mimic creatures that are around her, such as when she took on an appearance similar to Nightcrawler when she was around him. Oh, uh, she's vulnerable to attacks and have normal side blast humans in. She can also be dominated da, 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 because their person she's also barely been reading right. So yeah, based on this, I would probably say, even though she's rarely used, I probably would say probably I'd give it to Megan. Alright. GG. So Megan is our hero side champion. 
of the B-listers that I had acquired. Uh, next time, next week, we'll do the villains. Um, I already have them set up in brackets as well, in no particular right. order. Now, right. let me ask you guys this. Let me also. I have also a follow-up question. I need to ask you too. Okay. But if you want to do it for the first week, that's fine. I just have a question. Uh, what's your question? I can ask you after the fact. You're good. Oh, okay. Be, uh, so my know. question for you guys is: Do you want me? Not saying that you guys are going to write them down and go uh, and go whatnot, but e- even for the listeners, do you guys want me to just give you a quick rundown of who I have for the villains, so you guys can have in mind uh, different scenarios in your head? Or do you want me to do it like we did going into this with you guys not knowing who I have at all and then us looking it up as we go? Um, I mean, no, that's fine. You can do it that way. Uh, we can do it. Um, we can give us a list so I can look at some people. Is that all right. Doing that? Rob, you want to do that as well? Not not saying that you guys have to, but it'll give the listeners something to think about, and just you know, if you're super not familiar with one of them, you can just kind of like look into them and just see what their general powers are. I, don't know, I think I'd rather be surprised, so I'll take my headset off. If you won't. All right. I mean, if, if Rob will be surprised, I can go and knee jerk surprise. That's fine. Like I, it doesn't matter to me. Regardless. You can also just send you the list like off of the air. That works too. It doesn't honestly matter to me one way or the other. All right. Well, then I won't say anything, and the crowd can be surprised, too. Uh, all right. Well, with that being said, uh, that's our – that was my surprise SU for – I didn't let anybody in on anything. Um, and we'll do next week's uh, – the villain side of it, and then ultimately whoever wins the villain championship will be pinned up against uh, Megan to determine – who ultimately is the best B rank out of the list of people that we chose or that I chose. Um, so that being said, we need life advice this week with Devin and a getting real with Rob. If you have one yeah. life right. advice with Devin. Um, if you find yourself on a small Island away from most civilization and the only way to access that island and get to like make the mainland is through a boat and there's a small town there and they ask you to attend a church and take mass don't do it that's a very specific life advice with devin also too if you're in a lot of also too if you're if if you're in a lot of debt uh don't put yourself in a position where you uh may if somebody comes up to you makes you sign paperwork in blood saying hey um, you're basically going to owe me your life or you could commit yourself to something. Don't do that either. Um, that's life advice based off two Netflix shows I recently watched. All yeah, right, it's then. True. It's true. It's very uh, true. Now, what about getting real with Rob? What do you got for us this week, Rob? Uh, well, what I've got this week comes off a post that I saw that Tamara posted on Facebook, who is another Canadian, so she loses automatically. But uh, <laughs> uh, humans have stripes, apparently, which I did not know. That is not true. That is true. Keep going. Humans. I doubt it. Uh, they are not visible to the human eye, but they do glow under UV light, and cats apparently can see them without UV light. So cats think we all have stripes. Yeah. So we're just giant Tony called, the Tiger walking around for marks. cats? Yeah, they're called stretch yeah. marks. No, they're not just stretch marks. I know. Yeah, but those can be seen. Yeah, well, these are these are invisible to the human. There is a, a skin disease that actually makes them visible on people to the human eye, but they're always there. Listen, I have a skin. Uh, I have a skin disease. Well, it's not that particular one. No, and it's also not the one. I was one away based off the list. I was one away from being uh, a Smurf, Matilda. Uh, but there are um... no. Different patterns to it, uh, like there's like five different patterns that you could basically have that different, that humans have. One yeah. of them is like a checkered like harlequin one. I I'm, I hope I have that one. How do, how how do you know if you have one? <laughs> Everybody does. You just have them. You can only see it under if you're shining UV light on yourself. It's mostly on your back. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I'm skeptical. If I can't see it, then it doesn't exist. Okay. It does though. 
<laughs> I like I said, this is something I did not know, but after I saw Tamira's thing, I researched it, and yeah, it's true. Well, cool. All right, we got stripes. All right. Yeah, but now you're telling me that we don't just have stripes. We could have also, we could have up to five other different patterns. Well, I mean, they say stripes, but they're different patterns. Yeah, I'll, I'll see. If, I'll get the thing for you. Uh, uh, see if they. Unless you get a UV light, why, show why me. Are so why, you, why, why are you so against this? I don't know. I'm not a goddamn tiger or a zebra. You're not. You're a bear. Yeah, I mean, tech. Unless you throw me in under, if you threw me under into a room full of UV light and I just had like dark circles around my eyes and stuff and I look like a panda, then I'll believe you. Otherwise, I ain't no goddamn tiger. This shit ain't great. Okay. Yeah, that was a Tony the Tiger. That was a Frosted Flakes joke for all you kids. All right. Anyway, Rob, where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Confessor underscore X and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Confessor X. And Devin, where can people find you at? You can find me on Twitter at DMP underscore Pookie and on Twitch at Mr. D3. And you can find me on eBay. Um, Hanging out with me. Yes, there you go. Because I have eBay. something special I'm doing on eBay this week. As always, everybody, you guys can follow me on Twitter at Jacks Forest Walker, all one word, on Twitch at DM Webby, and on eBay at Selling My Stripes uh, with Devin. We're, no, we're stripeless now. Uh, <laughs> and with that, everybody, thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed. Uh, we love you. And fuck Booster Gold. Fuck Booster Gold. DC version of these B-listers, Booster Gold will not be on there either. He is not an A-list, he's not a B-list, he's not even a C-list in my book. I feel bad for my girl, Squirrel Girl. Didn't make it through, but that's what happens when you go against magic-wielding fairies. Yep.